Just the theater alone is enough to make him national artist, believe me. But his body of work is just so immense. And it was, uh, the impact was so great because, uh, you know, and not only at this time, but even now, people are still using his translations all over the country. Tribute to Rolando Esquino. A bit of trivia here. Rolando is about the only director I've worked with who sews our costumes while he directs us. <laughs> because he also designed and constructed our costumes in his productions. In the 90s, I got to direct him as Pedro Paterno in Floyd Quintos and St. Louis Loves a Filipino. A Dula IEP production. At around this time, I arranged a professorial lecturer position for him in the graduate program of the Department of Speech Communication and Theater Arts, which he assumed for one academic year. But the bureaucratic demands of UP on lecturers was too much for him to bear that he begged off an extension of his appointment. <laughs> It was in television and movies, often directed by Joey Lamayan, that Rolando and I became closest of friends. In his beautiful teleplay, An Lalaki Sa Pisngin Ang Buwan, he wrote a role with me in mind. In that role, I got nominated as a Best Supporting Actor. Again, thanks to Rolando. In films, we usually played characters in opposite roles. For instance, in Ricky Lee's Pangako ng Kahapon, he was a kasama fighting for the rights of field workers while I play a bishop who favors the landed aristocracy. While in Boots Dalisay Ikaw, I play the daughter father of Sharon Coneta, whose suitor, Ariel Rivera, is the son of my arch enemy, played by Rolando. <laughs> when we were filming the Sara Balabagan story, Rolando was slowly losing his grip on his strength. Many times he had to be carried from one location to another. On the day he passed on, I gave him a call, sharing with him the successful premiere of his last screenplay, Bayad Puri. He was pleased to hear the good news later in the afternoon. I sadly learned Rolando was gone. The last theater production of Rolando was Larawan, the musical adaptation of a portrait of an artist as Filipino, where he served as librettist. He was Nick Joaquin's only choice, with music by Ryan Kayabiab, but unfortunately, the production opened without him. Rolando completed blocking the prologue Acts 1 and 2, but not Act 3. Rolando's children, Tonchi and Bibi, prevailed on the producers for me to take over the unfinished project. I accepted on the condition that the directorial credit goes solely to my friend, Rolando Estillo. Adonza Prancha, Antunay na Maharlika, Namimili ng mahusay sa kanya isinusuo. Huwag mangungutang. Huwag ding magpapautang. Malimit mawawala ang pautang kasama ng kaibigan. At ang pangungutang kaaway ng kasinupan. Higit sa lahat, maging tapat sa sarili. At kasunod na, animoy gabing kasunod ng araw, maging tapat din sa bawat kapwa-tao. Paalam, Diyartes, ikintal ang lahat ng aking bendisyon.
I first met Orlando Tinio when I was a graduate student here in Ateneo. But at the time, he was already famous for his theatrical productions, for his uh, poems in both English and Filipino, and I think also for his plays. But he was a giant already in the Ateneo when I was a young student. I think he was a very good artist. I, I saw some of his plays very creative, very imaginative, and he thought out of the box and produced some of the most enduring works in Philippine theater. Because I was the youngest in the department at the time. I was also a graduate student. He treated me like a younger sister. Sometimes there was nobody to accompany him to the faculty lunch and he would say, so samahan mo naman ako, magko-coffee tayo doon. And of course, I would, be, I would go with him, but I would remain quiet because I was in the presence of the luminaries of the Ateneo in the early 70s. But my mind was dazzled by the brilliance of these people. And I, I tried to absorb as much as I could from, 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 the, from the intellectual discussion that was going on at the faculty lounge. When he told me that I should be writing on Philippine Leap is for me one of the most important moments in my life because it re really made me realize that I owe Philippine literature a lot. And whatever I possess must be used to further understand the products of our own writers and not the products coming from, from the West. So at that time, he was already, as I said, uh, quite famous for his temper <laughs> and also for his immense creativity as a director. He said, why be the one millionth person to write on Shakespeare when you could very well be the first to work on your own literature? That was really a definitive moment uh, because I was already gearing towards Philippine Lit, but that statement from his made me realize, my God, there is so much to be done in Philippine Lit, and yet people still insist on working on Shakespeare or Kafka or Moria or this other and other European and, and American writers because that was the tradition of the Ateneo. So I started my own love affair with Philippine literature with my thesis on Macario Pineda, uh, theme and technique in the works of Macario Pineda. And my advisor was his very good friend, Dr. Lumera. So between Dr. Lumera, the, the stolid scholar, and the witty and scintillating mind of Rolando Tino, I think I was made. Maybe I'd like to start with uh, three images of Rolando, as I recall. Uh, one, uh, uh, as a very passionate artist and all-consuming artist. I remember once we were doing Macbeth at the Metropolitan Theater and it was a rehearsal and uh, there were balloons from the back that would go up and they will represent the ghosts that were haunting Macbeth, the ghosts of the people he killed. And uh, at one point in rehearsal, two of the balloons did not go up. And he was so angry. He was so mad. And he was so mad to the point that his mouth started to bleed. I think he was even biting his lips. and. Uh, his wife, Ella, had to go, and he was the only one who could approach him. And Ella would go and get the tissue and wipe the lips because he was so angry at the whole thing, and we were all very afraid. And it occurred to me that, you know, Macbeth is a big production, and there are many elements to it, and of course the characters and the plot and the things, and just because of two balloons and in rehearsal, he was so enraged and he was shouting and things and blood was coming from his mouth. And it occurred to me that here's one guy who was all consuming every single aspect of the production meant something to him. 
whether the anger came from a personal thing or whether it was an artistic, it didn't really matter. But when it came to the production, he was a perfectionist. My second image is one, I think, of standards and integrity. Rolando was very outspoken about what was artistic and what was mediocre, and he hated the mediocre. And he was trying very hard to raise standards. Uh, he came to a point by saying, I don't do uh, Filipino plays mainly because none of them is good. None of them, not one he could do. Uh, he would cite about two or three, but that's all in the whole repertoire of Philippines. And he didn't like American plays either, except for a few. The third one, this is nationalism, which I also get. Uh, you know, and, and the one thing which made him great, I think, is, not, is his body of translated works in Filipino, which I am more exposed to, and his defense of the national language. You know, for many years, he just wrote in English, and when I was in college, he was teaching English here, and, and when he, my first play was with him doing Richard III in English, my second play was with him in English, T.S. Eliot's Murder in the Cathedral, and then I went abroad when I came back, Pinoy na siya. So, and the shift is very interesting because for many years he was trying to get how can I get this great European place in Shakespeare? How can I get those noble ideas in the hearts and minds of Filipinos? He said the only way I can do it is to translate it so that they can understand it. And so uh, for many years he translated, I think my last count was about more than 50 a European place, classic and modern, that he translated into Filipino. And the are still being used now, and many times I get requests from people, may copy ka ba ng Hamlet? May copy ka ba ng uh, itong nila? Sabi ko sa UP, pinabilisan nila yung Hamlet at saka yung Ramon Jew. Just the theater alone is enough to make him national artist, believe me. But his body of work is just so immense. And it was, uh, uh, the impact was so great because, uh, you know, in not only at this time, but even now, People are still using his translations all over the country, and even in his poetry, contributing something. And his writing, believe me, is world class. That's another thing. I just finished doing his uh, play, uh, it's April, what are we doing here? Written in 1960 and got an award, the Palanca 1964, and it is just amazing. But it, English by ito, wala pa sa Filipino days na. Ang pagkasulat talaga ay world class. I mean, kung Maipapareha mo yan sa any contemporary uh, European or American place, sa structure, sa language, sa subtlety, at lahat ato ng tradisyon ng mga English lit nandun, kay Czech, kay Brecht, kay Pinter, nandun lahat. Nandun lahat ang Greek myth ni Odysseus. Nandun lahat, any lit major is quite an orgasm just in reading this work. Iginagawa ng artista ng bayan sa taong Isang libo siyam naraan siyam naputpito kay Rolando Tinio.